Here we go. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to take information to transform you into that place where you can have what God intended for you to have. There was this one exercise that we had to do where you had to write a note out to your spouse about some things you wanted him or her to know. So I had to read the note while he had to listen. Pastor Mike Freeman, and this one right here is my darling wife, Dee Dee Freeman. And we want to thank you, first of all, for tuning in with us today. Uh, what do you think of when it comes to, first of all, marriage? Uh, is it just wedding? Is it having children? Maybe it's even divorce. <laughs> Some so people think good. about divorce when they think about marriage. How about lasting covenant? This is true. But so many people don't have the knowledge they need to really understand marriage. That's true. Even as Christians, we often forget that God loves and has ordained marriage. He has ordained yes, it. He so has. join us now for part one of our special series about marriage. Marriage and learn how to transform your marriage and manifest God's best in it. It's easier than you think. Watch this. In our society today, we have a lot of things that are mentioned concerning marriage, and we see marriage in so many different forms and mm -hmm. descriptions and definitions as it relates to what God intended. We have something entirely mm -hmm. uh, different. The, the scripture gives us a clear picture of what the covenant of marriage is about. And I think I've taken um, an, a different position or angle on even fighting or disputing this thing about same-sex marriage because that is never going to be what God intended or what was in the original mindset of, right. of God from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. You can never have same-sex in covenant. Right. You, you can create whatever you want to create as it relates to so-called marriage, mm -hmm. but you cannot create same-sex anything in covenant. Mm -hmm. So what, what we see and what is trying to be thrown, you know, really in our face to make us mm -hmm. accept, accept these it. days uh, isn't even what God was referring to. Um, you know, you can tell me how you feel about this whole thing, but... I had an opportunity to watch the Grammys and when they had this young lady to come out and perform what is considered a ceremony mm -hmm. of all different kind of races and peoples and, and people and so forth and so on, um, it, it, it seemed to be applauded and, and acceptable in, in our society, but you know, to see the two men or the mm -hmm. two women together. That was never what God intended At for. At all. I mean, but we have to understand that the media is the platform for the devil. You know, he uses that. It's being used to the majority or the um, greatest part of well, the, the media. Majority. Because this is media right here. Well, the, well, this is true. Right. You know, but that's why the church got to get their money straight. But money then we can get ministry. in control, Absolutely. you know, of what we put on the air. But for the most part, the media is controlled by the secular arena. And because of that, you know, the enemy is able to produce what he want us to receive. 
Absolutely. You know, this is how they program us. It's like, okay, this is what is acceptable to us, so this is what should be acceptable to you. And if we don't have any standards as far as the word is concerned, we're going to lose our own values and morals and begin to back up and begin to accept it. Yeah, I heard one young lady uh, just here recently on television. She said this concept of, and they lived happily ever after, no longer works. So we need something different than what's being projected as it relates to that to ensure that we're going to have the proper viewing that we want to have. On, on today's show, we're going to be talking about the different dynamics and elements of marriage being made easy. Mm -hmm. I am talking about what God intended. Yes. Now, I, I, I want to make that absolutely clear, and neither did we anticipate going that route while we were preparing to even uh, do this show. But at, at the same time, it, it is not clear. The power to define is the power to fulfill. And whatever you did not have the authority to define, you don't have to, the right to redefine. Exactly. And so in our society, as it relates to the secular arena that you just mentioned, many times we are bombarded now with another definition. Mm -hmm. And we want to be absolutely crystal clear on uh, what we're doing and what we're saying here mm -hmm. on uh, this week of, of marriage. Uh, the Bible is clear that my people perish <laughs> for well, lack, lack of, of knowledge. knowledge. And he didn't say any other people. Mm -hmm. He said his people. Mm -hmm. And his people are those who have given their lives solely over to the Lord Jesus Christ. And when you and I make Jesus Christ the Lord of our lives, mm -hmm. we forfeit the right to do life on our own. It is not our thing. Right. So then now when you're talking about not having the right to do life on our own, we cannot just come up with what we want to come up with mm -hmm. and do marriage the way we want to do exactly. it. Exactly. We tried it, though. Yeah, absolutely. The scripture is clear that his people perish, not some other people, but the, his people perish because lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be sharing on how we have to take the word of God and apply it to our covenant, mm -hmm. our marriage, based upon the definition we talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. God has um, graced us with the ability to take some of the life experiences from marriage, mm -hmm. from the Word of God, mm -hmm. from other couples, mm -hmm. from, uh, those who are in ministry and those who are also in the secular arena that right. you mentioned marketplace or whatever have you. I, I, I was also watching uh, the Grammys when um, Jay-Z and uh, Beyonce, they, they're just a power couple to me, <laughs> whether they are they're dominating. lifting up the name of Jesus exactly. or whatever have you. It is what it is. It is, is what far, it is. What, what, you know, where they are, concerned. they are dominating. And there's a level of attraction right. that's on their relationship. I mm -hmm. think I think um, I think uh, Jay and Beyonce are that way. I think Will and um, Jada, what's his, Jada, Jada. Uh, uh, Pickett, Smith. Smith uh, well, you know, mm -hmm. Mr. Smith. Smith. Uh, I, I don't know. So we're we're others. the Jay Z and Beyonces of of the gospel. Uh, yeah, but there should be some type of attraction. It should be. It should I, be. I want. A, I want. I want to glamorize mm -hmm. again and bring back a level mm -hmm. of attraction to what God intended as it relates to the covenant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, and we should do that. I mean, I think that's our responsibility as a whole, not just for you and I to glamorize what God intended for marriage to be, but for everyone to, mm -hmm. I mean, because it's like the Bible says it's his goodness that will cause a man to repent. Absolutely. You know, and so we should be demonstrating the goodness of God here in the earth mm -hmm. that will cause others to want to come in and live the way we live. Yeah. Now this, this, this glamour that I'm talking about, I, I, I'm really referring to the glory. Right. But that glamour attracts. It's Anytime the glory. you look up. Absolutely. Mm -hmm, I love that. It's the glory that's really on a reverse mm -hmm. kind of I like that. presentation mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
there's there's a glory that's on their relationship mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that people are aspiring to, to become be, like. Yep. And uh, it's it's amazing because someone told me that uh, our birthdays, Jay Z and I, our birthdays are on the same day. Hell yeah! And and he's the young buck. I mean, he 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 get all that swag from me. Oh. I mean, <laughs> I was here first. I am the originator. No, you're the originator of swag. <laughs> no, no, as it relates to this power couple. I mean, our marriage should be right. See, listen. And we're I'm gonna tell you what they're attracted to. What I'm talking about. Uh -huh. okay, I'm ahead. gonna tell you what they're attracted to. They people are attracted to their their fame, mm -hmm. right? And 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 God told Abraham, "I'll make your name great,", great. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Okay. They are attracted to their money. Mm -hmm. Well, that's true. You, you follow what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And and the scripture says that He made Abram very rich. Mm -hmm. See, all the things they're attracted to their marriage what it appears to be their oneness with their precious baby girl mm -hmm, and so forth. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not exalting. Of course, because that's what I was going to say, because in no way are we sanctioning what they are, you know, a part of or what they're doing. I don't or know no, what they're a part that's of. That's what I'm saying. I, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about as far as. I sure would love to have an opportunity to minister to them and share with them and, and uh, see if Jesus is in there somewhere, you know. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. I mean, but, you know, they can give the appearance of having something. Right. Anybody can do that. And so, right. you know, I don't know what they live outside of, in front of, you know, people. But, but certainly what we see. What we see, it, it looks okay. You know, but I. And I personally love it. I personally love what I see as it relates to their relationship, what's being projected. Outside of the music thing, the music thing is not my thing anyway. Mm -hmm, I can, mm -hmm. I can care less all about like, mm -hmm. what what the show is like and that kind of thing. But I mean, come on, the man is sitting down with the president of the United States. I mean, they have worldwide notoriety. Mm -hmm. They appear to have every need met. They appear. What, my point is, is that that has to get in the body of Christ. Right. I agree with that. I agree with that because that's what's going to attract. That we call that Gentile bait. Okay, there you go. You know, we call that Gentile bait. Sinners are after some stuff. Absolutely. You know, we're not trying to win the church. Absolutely. You know, we're trying to win the world, the Absolutely. sinners. Absolutely. And so they are attracted no, no, to No, no, what having, do you mean Gentile bait? Because no, the, yeah, that, the people that, who are watching, they may not know what you Well, that's bait. true. I mean, just stuff, the material things. You know, the world is looking for stuff. The Bible uh, says, seek ye first the, the kingdom, kingdom of God and right. his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto shall be you. Added. And, and so these are the things the Bible says that the Gentiles seek, seek after. after. And we're supposed to have the mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. that they have mm -hmm. in the world as this power mm -hmm. couple mm -hmm. that we're supposed to have so that we can attract all men unto Jesus Christ. It wouldn't be about D.D. and I. It's, it's not about, it it's be never about, been about us. Absolutely. You know? It's never been about us, but it's about us glorifying the Father so others can see and receive him as Lord. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to take information to transform you into that place where you can have what God intended for you to have. Amen. And quite frankly, there are not enough couples who are reading enough material on marriage so that they can have Yes. what we have seen from the scripture. You know, when Adam and Eve first was created, the Bible says there possessed upon them this glory. Mm -hmm. A glory so apparent to one another that they did not even know that they were naked. Now, I'm sure because the Bible told them to be fruitful and multiply, mm -hmm. there was the ability to procreate right. in that. Yeah. But her physical features was not his attraction. Mm. His physical features were not his, her attraction, but the glory of God. See, this is what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Actually, actually, that word naked they, and, and the shame, when that glory was removed mm -hmm. off of them, mm -hmm. that's when they discovered 
how awful they were to get. I mean, uh, uh, yeah. I mean, they didn't. <laughs> that's, maybe that's what some of these couples are missing, the glory. Absolutely. See, the glory will cover us, and we won't have to be so concerned about how each other look. Huh? How we look, <laughs> well, how we're presenting uh -huh. ourselves, because it is the glory that creates the glamour. Mm -hmm. And we have not glamorized because the glory has gone up. And a lot of these marriages, and we're not. So regardless of how my shape, you know, would appear to me, you could see something totally different if the glory of God is in our relationship. I, our I wouldn't relationship. want to go that far. <laughs> no, no. I thought you would go there. I wouldn't want to go that far. No, the, the glory of God, however, supersedes all of those natural things. Mm -hmm. Because how many couples have created that as a deal breaker. Right. And you know, I've read, uh, when I, I take that back, I just heard a report recently that about 51 or 52% of couples uh, really end up in divorce because of the deal breakers of gaining weight. One spouse or the other has gained the weight. And it's usually on the woman's side because the woman has gained weight, the men have you know, yeah, decided yeah. they don't want to be in a relationship. And you're looking for all the wrong things, and that projection pretty much is coming from what you're getting in the media. I mean, come on, folks, let's face it. The, the media is in charge of establishing cultures. And if, in fact, we don't yeah. get more of this to establish mm -hmm. a culture of righteousness, mm -hmm. especially in the lives of the believers, then we're going to fail miserably right. in generations to come. Now, getting back into having information, we've taken the Word of God, we've taken different experiences, and we have compiled them in this book. We have couples who have been reading, and not only reading, but doing, doing this, it. because this is not a book that you read, that you only. just read only. <laughs> this is a book that you do. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says, faith without works is dead. You have to be doers of the word. And it's a template to some degree. Mm -hmm. Some people don't know where to start. Right, right. You'll you hear about testimonies of couples who have gone on for years without having that information. And you need to have information to really have the transformation of your relationship. Stay tuned. First of all, I want to just say thank you, Pastor Mike, for making this charge because this charge, man, it was it's phenomenal because the book helped us, not just the content that's in the book, but also just the external of the book, the stuff that's not even on the pages. Mm. Because when we're moving and, and doing homework with the kids and Taekwondo and this and working late and, and everybody's tired and we like, we got to do the book. And, and, you know, specifically, you know, it, it just really lights up because this is the one right here that, oh, man, she, when, when oh, she, uh, you know, she deal with kids all day. And when she lands, she lands. And yeah, so, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. so I'm like, yeah, hey, but we got to right. we got to do this book. Right. And so it's like keeping us accountable. And at the same I time, we laughing it. and like, girl, you, <laughs> that's not a word. Because <laughs> she... Because she landed. And so I said, so I said, okay, okay, I'm going to get you some water. And so we might stay up a little late, but all right, I'm going to give you 15 minutes. And so we, we got teamwork going on before we even read the book. I see that. I see that. Right, right. Because, right. man, I love this girl. That, We've been sweet. married for uh, over 13 years, going on 14 oh, years. I love it. I love man, it. Man, and this girl has just, man, God, I owe it to God, but she has made a better me. She has loved me even when I didn't know how to love myself, right? And so sometimes I talk about it and I just got to make sure I stay, you know, composed. But, but the book did good. And so once we got inside of the book, after, you know, whether I was tired or whether she was tired, it, it, it just kind of hit because, you know, it helps as it relates to just the, uh, the agreement portion. Right. You know, the agreement and, you know, because we don't, we don't try to argue. We have little spurts, but she's more of the one that will walk away. Yeah, you know I'm the aggressor, and so she. So with that, we got to revisit. We, we we can't let it go untouched. We, we we can't just say okay, all right, we made up, but we hadn't spoken. The book to me was very easy. We're actually up to date. We actually read seasons, and uh, <laughs> so we read that on the way down actually. But there was this one um, exercise that we had to do where 
you had to write a note out to your spouse about some things you wanted him or her to know. (laughs) So I had to read the note while he had to listen. And then he had to read his note and I had to listen. And so I had to read my note to Mm -hmm. him. And I was a little nervous about how he was gonna take what was on the note. what was on the note, but um, it was really good because it opened up a conversation for us to really dig into some things. And I had to tell him that Mm. I need him to be focused better. You know, like when you start out to do something, I need you to start out, what does Pastor Mike say? Start right, stay right, and finish right. (laughs) So I had to tell him, I need you to stay focused this year and really finish whatever you start. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, how do you tell somebody that, you know, but it was good. I, I didn't like doing it, but it was good. It needed to be done. Very simply here, God wants to use your relationship. He wants to use your marriage. Uh, DD9, Jay-Z, whomever. Forget about <laughs> all of that. How about your relationship? Don't you want your relationship to be a trophy in God's hand so that he can show the world what he intended for marriage to look like from the very, very beginning? It's important and you can have it. Dita and I both, we hope today's teaching has challenged you to act and improve your marriage. Understanding communication, agreement, forgiveness, and faith. And faith. These are just a few of the vital keys vital. to help equip and strengthen your marriage. Please pray with us. All so, right. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for every married couple that is watching today. We pray that they will have a blessed relationship. Absolutely. That their communication will be great, that their faith will not fail them, that they will come together in unity, decreeing what they want to see, yes. and have a All blessed things. relationship. Absolutely. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, we'll put some things together that are essential. It's essential resources to help your marriage. If anybody is going to help your marriage, it must be you. Or just for a better relationship. Watch this and we'll get right back to you. Have you ever looked at your spouse and wondered why you ever married them? Instead of loving and caring for each other, all you do is complain, argue, and fight with one another. Maybe you feel like you've reached the point of no return and the only choice is separation or divorce. It doesn't have to be this way. Your marriage is not hopeless and it can be saved. Pastors Mike and Dee Dee Freeman are kingdom teachers, anointed and called to build your faith and administer healing to revive your family and your marriage. Even if you think your marriage is over and have filed for divorce, your marriage can still be restored. What you just saw was just a small sample of their powerful and inspiring series, 31 Days to Change Your Marriage where the Freemans disclosed insights for you to know God's wisdom and knowledge, to receive a divine reversal in your marriage, just like they did in theirs. Call now to receive this full series in its entirety. In addition to their extraordinary series, you'll receive their transformational book, Marriage Made Easy in 31 Days. In this book, the Freemans provide essential keys to equip you to regain the love, intimacy, and respect you and your spouse once had for each other. Don't continue to allow disagreements, struggles, and hardships of life tear your marriage apart. Get these practical and biblical solutions to reform, retool, and refuel your communication, feelings, family responsibilities, and marital outlook. But that's not all. You will also receive Pastor Didi's captivating teaching entitled, Trust the Process. If you have ever felt like giving up or found yourself simply going through the motions of life while crying inside for something life-changing, renewing, and refreshing to occur, this DVD is for you. Didi will encourage you to focus and not faint while waiting on God and help you understand that the process prepares you to receive the promise. This empowering collection, along with a bonus bookmark, 10 Nuggets for a Marriage Made Easy, will build and strengthen your faith to see and seize your God-ordained turnaround in life and in marriage. You will trust God and trust each other like never before. Call today with a love gift of $35 to receive the entire collection or for your very best gift of any amount, receive the 31 Days to Change Your Marriage 2-Disc DVD Series. 
These indispensable teachings will turn you, your family, and your marriage around and faithfully solidify your bonds of love and life together. It's time to believe that God will restore everything so you can win in life and in marriage. Our operators are standing by. Call now. Thank you again for tuning in today. Join us online or connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. We're turning up, turning up next week. Join us next week, part two of our series, Marriage Made Easy. We'll see you then, all right? I didn't know that um, communication meant that we both had to, you know, speak and then understand what each other was saying. I thought it was just me saying what I wanted to say. And a lot of times that's what we've all been taught. We've been taught how to say what we want to say, but we haven't been taught how to hear what the other person is saying. Mm -hmm. You know, because we all, again, are products of the environments that we've come out of, and we hear what we want to hear, sometimes opposed to hearing what is being said. At Spirit of Faith Christian Center, we are shaping lives, changing the world, and building strong families. We are proud to be a life-shaping, world-changing, transformational community. We are a supernatural church with supernatural people doing supernatural things. And if you're ever in the D.C. or Maryland area, we would love for you to join us at one of our locations. For more information about Spirit of Faith or for service times and locations, please visit us online at spiritoffaith.org. We look forward to seeing you here. In 2014, D.D. Freeman and Spirit of Faith Ministries purchased a small, dilapidated townhouse community in the heart of Prince George's County, Maryland. Since then, they have been working to renovate 12 townhomes so that they can open D.D.'s House of Hope, a ministry dedicated to providing emergency shelter, traditional housing, and social services to the women and their dependent children who are victims of domestic violence. Pastor D.D. Freeman is committed to recognizing and responding to her community's need for domestic violence services for women and children. Dee's House of Hope is a catalyst in transforming the lives of the women and children in the community. It will be a safe haven for victims of abuse to receive housing, emotional support, and services focused on safety, empowerment, and self-sufficiency. Our goal is to help the resident to free these women from the generational cycle of domestic violence and the fear of abuse. We've done so much to love and nurture these women through our counseling services at Spirit of Faith. But Dee's House of Hope will allow us to take it to the next level, to transforming the lives of these women and children. Now it's your turn to join Pastor Dee Dee and Spirit of Faith Ministries. When you call today to financially support and come in agreement with us, you will be a part of the change in hope that the victims of domestic violence desperately need. We cannot do this without you. I know that with your help, we can do this. With your prayers and your financial funding, we can create a safe, loving, comforting community for those who need it. It's time for us to come together and support these women and children. Call or go online today to donate to Dee's House of Hope and help us change the lives of these women together. We can be a house of hope. Together, we can fight to end the cycle of abuse once and for all.